your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, it could be to say I doubt the whole stand up to something. I haven't been disrespectful to you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything Everywhere All at Once, because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Uh, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rumble, Rockfin. Did I say YouTube? <laughs> We're everywhere. Wherever they'll have us. Twitter sometimes, Twitch for now, Facebook even. My goodness. Uh, before I bring in our fabulous guest for this afternoon, I must alert you to a couple of stand-up shows. I am going to be in Texas in about three weeks doing a couple of headlining shows, and I'll be at Anime Matsuri. So come see me in Austin Wednesday, August 9th at Roscoe's Comedy Club on East 7th Street in Austin. It's a 10 o'clock show. Lila Hart will be featuring for me. She's super fun, just adorable. Uh, and if you're in town for the Anime Matsuri convention, I better see you at the Houston show. But if not, uh, come by the convention. There'll be a simp cast panel booth i'll be there lila will be there i think ms Brittany venti will be there possibly ashton birdie will be there possibly melanie mack we're getting it together guys uh one of us will be there to sign your boobs don't you fret and then i'll be headlining in houston friday august 11th at the secret group nice early show seven o'clock lila hart is featuring there as well it's just going to be so much fun. Then I'm back in Long Island, October 27th and 28th at the Brokerage Comedy Club in Belmore. Then I got more dates coming up. I'll be in Tampa, Florida, back at Side Splitters, uh, December 3rd. That's a nice, uh, that's a Sunday show. And then I'll be back in San Diego at the Mic Drop Comedy Club, March 1st and 2nd. So I'm patching together a nice little maybe fall, winter, spring tour working on a few things. Hopefully uh, Vegas, we got Vegas plans. We got a big project in Vegas that we're hoping we're hoping uh, comes through. So just, just keep your eyes peeled, everybody. And of course, if you know of or have a venue that has 100 plus seats, uh, hit me up, tweet at me, email me. You know what I mean? I'll perform wherever. I'll, I'll perform in an Elks Lodge. I'll do it again. That was That was basically my favorite, one of my favorite shows. <laughs> of this year was at the Elks Lodge in Pasadena. Good times, good times. Okay, okay. Our guest today, uh, my goodness, she, I love her accent. If if no other reason, just listen to the show for her, her lovely British accent. Uh, she's the vice president of content and executive producer at Popcorn Planet. Welcome to the show, Steph the Alter Nerd. Hello, Steph. Hey up, Chrissy. Thank you for having me on. How's it going? I love your voice. Oh my God. <laughs> Why can't I have a cool accent? <sighs> because you, it's, it's one of those accents I found on the internet. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are like, your accent's really cool. And then others are like, it's really awful. I can't understand you. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, fair enough. But what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Long Island, uh, out in New York, and we have a new serial killer. Really, like, Long Island is really best known for, there was a woman a couple de decades ago who cut a man's penis off, and now we have this new serial killer. And uh, we're known for tanning and the beach. It's it's kind of like, it's similar to Jersey. We're like, biologically, DNA-wise, similar to New Jersey folk. Is this new serial killer like cutting penises off as well or doing some at queer queer no i think he kept his penis he i think is going well, to jail shame. forever my sister and i were talking earlier today she's like oh my god that road uh 
where he was hiding all the bodies on the way to Jones Beach. She's like, I used to drive there all the time. Like, I would go to the beach. I love driving down that Ocean Parkway where it all the bo-. and she's like, that's a great spot for hiding bodies. The grass is very tall. <laughs> I guess I, apparently they were looking for this one chick and they ended up finding these eight other women. And one of them was like uh, an Asian dude dressed in women's clothing. So we feel like this guy maybe ordered. He had a thing for prostitutes. So we, we were thinking like maybe he just ordered up a toot and this one was a dude and he got upset and, you know, things things happen. Not happy with the goods, quite clearly. Not wanted a refund and couldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I guess a bit tricky in those situations, I have to admit. You never know. And things are just getting better and better. I'm so happy that I am not a single man right now in 2023 because how do you know that you're even dealing? You don't even know what you're dealing with. The Everyone's makeup. There's too many contouring videos on YouTube. You can make your face up like a woman pretty easily. You can get a BBL. You can get whatever whatever genitals you want chopped off, grown one on your arm, stick it back on. It's just getting better. Put one quite literally on your head, that kind of thing, right? I, tr- I tried internet dating like for a hot minute and then dropped it like it was hot shiz. Like no way. No, do you guys, no, what dating done. apps do you have in the in the UK? Where do you even live? London? I just, just I'm, I'm, this is how dumb I am. Anytime I hear someone with a British accent, I'm like, oh, you're from, must be from London. <laughs> That's the only- oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, I'm, North, uh, I'm North England, so I'm from Yorkshire. Oh, I'm like, like pudding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm like about three, four hour train ride away from okay. London. That's so I'm bad. quite, I'm quite up north. Okay. And uh, you're like in the upstate New York, like kind of, yeah. I, I've, I'm feeling it. Yeah. That's about how I live. Like just a, not as posh and as. Yeah. Twice. If, <laughs> I wonder if you live near as I think as uh, he yes. has baby face lives in Yorkshire. Yeah, he does. Have you guys ever met or collabed? No, <gasps> no. I know. I inter- him. Love that. We've, n- we've, we've not really spoken, spoken, but I do know of him. So, okay. yeah. But I, I think he's like from South Yorkshire, if I'm not mistaken. Is one area like better than the other? Not really. Yorkshire's Yorkshire. Okay. If if you re- if you really want to choose North Yorkshire, is like okay. the best. Oh, cool. In my opinion, I have only been to London. I went on a high school. I was in like one play in high school. I had no lines. I was just a courtesan, which is a fancy word for prostitute. And a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. And I think my junior year, we went to London. I can't believe my parents even let me go. I was like 16, I think. And that was that's my whole experience of of the UK. <laughs> it's just being there. And uh, there were a couple of guys that were like making fun of my American accent. And I was like, what? You're the one with the funny accent. And that's my whole, that's all of my traveling right there. I I have Andy over on Popcorn Planet. He sometimes tries to do a British accent, but he doesn't realise that he sounds Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> he's like so proud thinking that he's got the British accent on lock and it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you well, sound Scottish, mate. <laughs> tell me about the Popcorn Planet. Oh, my goodness. What do you want to know? Where to start with that? Everything, everything. All right. You are you. You are the founder. No, you're the vice president and in, in, of content and executive producer. Yeah, um, that really wasn't by design. So <laughs> it's coming up to four years ago. Um, Andy uh, released a video, which was the Me Too Misfire video on uh, Popcorn Planet. Uh, he was cancelled a few years prior when he was big on screen junkies for allegations that turned out to be false. And he did this Me Too Misfire video where he dropped all the receipts. Now, um, I used to watch screen junkies all the time. And when it first came out, I actually believed the allegations. And I was truthful to him in the end. I said, look, you know, it's because of what I've gone through when I was younger. I just automatically believed. But when I messaged him, 
out of the blue, just randomly, you didn't know me at that point. I was just like, you know, thanks for dropping that video. Sorry, I believe the BS. Um, mm. But I've subscribed to you. You've got a fan kind of thing. Um, good luck with future and all the success, this, that, and the other. And to my surprise, he actually responded back. I never thought he'd respond. And so we were messaging back and forth, completely friendly, platonic, all that jazz, right? And then the following year, just before the lockdown started, he was like, oh, we're all on a stream at the moment on Popcorn Planet. Myself, Nerd Report and Jodie's Corner. We think it's actually a good time for you at the moment. It's not some late in the night situation. Do you want to jump on and say hi to us? And it was about 6.30 in the evening for me. So I was like, okay. So I jump on with like my old iPad Air and my <laughs> Beats headphones inside. And um, yeah, go on stream for the first time and say hi to everyone. And as soon as I opened my garb, I remember Jody's reaction in particular. His jaw just dropped. And he was like, who the hell is this? Oh, wow. And is it that... kind of then snowballed from there, really. Um, was that your in... first experience with streaming at all? Yes. Oh, cool. Totally my first experience. And then the the next day, Andy messaged me saying, uh, the new Warriors um, uh, comic book, uh, details have come out about it. What do you think to it? I says, it's a whole load of work BS. Why? He says, perfect. Do you want to do a video of me on it? I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so I did a video and then I started contributing more as a guest. And then for some reason, he started asking about okay what do you think to this title and what do you think to this topic and this thumbnail and I'm like well giving him my thoughts and I'm thinking well hang on a minute let's learn a little bit more about this whole YouTube stuff so I started to learn about effective thumbnails titles SEOs tags descriptions all that lot and just the more I learned about it the more I was able to help Andy uh to the point where yeah kind of just fell into where I am right now. How how did you learn about all of that? Is it was it through watching videos on YouTube? Was it like sort of looking to other channels that have a big following? Uh cuz a lot of this stuff I think is self-taught, you know, uh, unless you know somebody, it it's hard to kind of just just figure it out. And you could be doing YouTube for years and be like, "Wow, why is why are none of my videos getting much traction?" and that I find that that SEO stuff is kind of like the missing link. Yeah, the SEO stuff is a missing link. So I watched a couple of YouTube videos. Um, I also found some like um, uh, tutorials on SEOs on other websites uh, that I bought and paid for and and went through and yeah and 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 just did that and yeah. kind of learned myself that way because. I think with YouTube, a lot of it is self-taught. Um, you you kind of have to, if you really want to be, you know, successful on YouTube and you want to have half a chance on YouTube, you really do need to, as far as I'm concerned, get into the technical side of it, of, you know, your tags, effective descriptions and titles and thumbnails and all that lot. And even like the equipment for a studio, you, you really, really need to learn the technical side of it all um so yeah yeah because the market is just it's flooded with uh with talent and content that it's like you could have a great opinion you could look great but if you don't have the right camera the right microphone uh the right lighting it's you're gonna be lost in a sea of people who maybe are not as good but they have the technical side down which makes a huge difference yeah it does make a huge difference. And that's not to say, you know, when you first start out, you need to have like all of this stuff. Um, but it, it's really a case of I've all I always thought to myself, if I reinvest everything that I make on the side with YouTube back into my channel, get the best equipment that I can and, and everything else, it'll all just kind of start falling into place and yeah, here we are. Yeah, and it definitely has. Uh, so when did you start your own channel here? Let's see. Um, gosh, I mean, you're doing great. You're up to like 71.4K subscribers. Uh, have you been even, I feel like you haven't even been doing it that long, but your stuff is doing great. You're 
you have great views. Yeah, your thumbnails are all on so, point. Yeah, I've been doing it for just over two years now, my own channel. Mm -hmm. I originally um, created a channel with two friends who no longer were mates. And when that kind of like split off, I was like, okay, screw it. I'll just do my own channel. That was it. And just have fun, do my own channel and see where it goes. Um, I started off with, you know, something that I'm obviously interested in, you know, pop culture, so movies, TV series, things like that. And then went into a lot more of what's trending and finally found my feet with something else that I'm very passionate about, which is the royal family. It takes a while. Like when you start a YouTube channel, I do believe that whatever you start out as, you don't end up being. You find mm. your feet and you yeah. find what your niche is and what you're good at and what you enjoy talking about the most um, a little bit later down the line. But that's okay. That's, I think, just part of the whole YouTube journey in of itself. Yeah, so, you're, yeah. And the only way you can find out is by doing it, by going through it and just figuring Correct. out what works, what doesn't work. And you do have to enjoy what you're talking about. It, it can't always just be like, okay, yeah, I know a certain amount of, like politics are trending all the time, but it's like, I, I will not enjoy talking about that every single day. So you have to find just what works for you. And it's, it's just funny. It seems like, <laughs> it seems like the Royal family is, I'm like, what would be the equivalent here? Cause we, I mean, we have so many celebrities, but I feel like in America, uh, interest in celebrities has very much gone down the last 10 years. And, and, very much so since the pandemic. I think people are just sort of like, I remember growing up in the 90s, like me, my mom, my sister, we'd all watch, you know, Entertainment Tonight. We we were always looking at tabloids, uh, maybe because it was pre-social media and it's just, we were not getting, mm -hmm. uh, we just, we weren't getting enough information. So anything you'd hear about a celebrity, you'd be like, oh, wow. You see yes. them like outside outside walking around you're like what are they doing now it's like i couldn't care less maybe i don't know if that's because i know i, I, I was always them. like waiting for the next smash hits magazine or top of the pops magazine uh to find out about like my favorite bands and you know singers and and, and things like that now they're pretty much obsolete magazines you want to know something about what's going on with latest with your favorite celebrity or music style whatever you just go online that's just the way it is now. Queen Elizabeth, I think, was born to be 95 years old. Like she has looked, I know she's she's passed now. And I know I got some, I got some shit. I think when I had like my friend Ashton on, and she was like, I'm glad the queen is dead. And that was a video did so poorly. I think we mm. actually had to hide it because it was such a crazy backlash. And it was like right after she oh, passed yeah. away. <laughs> but, but like I, I think she's looked a hundred years old my entire life. So, uh, what, like, what was it? Was it, was it princess die? Like what got you very interested in the Royal family? I've always been interested in the Royal family since I was young. I've been a Royalist pretty much all my life. It's just, um, I've, I've, I've always said this, like the Royal family is part of our British identity. It's just part of our culture. It's just as simple as that. You just grow up with it you know um and some people take it to it more than others and i took to it more than others um and so yeah it's a case of like with harry and megan whenever they are disrespecting the royal family they're not just disrespecting the royal family they're disrespecting our culture our way of life the british people as well um which is something that you know, I don't think a lot of Americans actually understand, get or know. Um, it's like the, the way that I try and explain it is if someone grabbed the American flag, mm. put it on the floor, doused it with gasoline, set it on fire, did unspeakable things to it. I know a lot of Americans would have a lot to say about that and there'd be this visceral kind of emotional feeling inside. And kind of the same with royal family in a sense. And that, that's been happening, happening more and more. I mean, I, I feel like every time there was a the BLM protest or like Antifa was out causing trouble, there'd be like, oh, we're burning a flag again. And I think people have become desensitized to that to a degree, mm -hmm. which is really unfortunate because it's incredibly uh, disrespectful. 
do you is there a sense uh that Megan is 100% to blame for for Harry's kind of downfall in the royal family? Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. The popular running theory is that uh, Megan's controlling him. She's the puppet master. She says he follows. That's it. Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. But day one, I've turned around and I've said they're both as bad as each other. Um, Harry's always had this animosity inside of him against the royal family. It's just, It just took meeting Megzy to get it out of him. The mm. two peas in a pod. Oh, really? Okay, so he's just as bad. Oh, hell yeah. It's just not like she is 100% controlling him, telling him what to do. I mean, that's kind of the perception in, in America is that he, it, he's just whipped. He's a beta. He's no. he's let her ruin his relationship with his family. No, it doesn't make sense that he's whipped because he grew up in a scenario whereby whatever he said people had to do. He's a prince. Like, whatever he wanted, he got. So, for him to be whipped, no. No way. Doesn't make sense. Wow. Okay. Do you ever see th th that relationship getting repaired? I mean, it, it, it seems kind of unprecedented. Like, I don't think in my lifetime I've ever seen someone in the royal family like make such a departure in that way. So, um, let me just uh, bring it up uh, here. So, because um, <laughs> Prince Harry's memoirs, I always get them mixed up. So, the equivalent that we've got is back in like the 1930s, 1940s uh, with King Edward VIII when he abdicated the throne and essentially quit the royal family for an American Wallace Simpson, right? Um, the, Harry and Meghan are essentially that, but like 10 times worse because where the Edward and Wallace Simpson, they went over to America, kind of lived their life out quietly, this, that, and the other, whatever, right? Yeah, Hazel and Megzi have definitely not done that. So there has been precedent before for something like this um, in terms of like someone high level in the royal family completely exiting, quitting and all that lot. It's just then what's happened afterwards is slightly different. I think this is pretty funny. Uh, Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, is the most dumped book of the summer with 100 copies <laughs> left behind by holiday makers in resorts in Spain, Greece and Turkey. Woo! I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's 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 not even worth the paper to wipe my own dumps with really in the grand <laughs> scheme of things uh it's 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 absolutely insane uh, and the update to all of this is that um megan apparently is very regretful of that book ever coming out and wishes that she had more of a hand in shaping that book and controlling it more really yeah because of all the backlash that they've had since then. Wow. Because that book really was absolutely not received very well in at all. Completely mocked. Part of it debunked, actually. Uh, but yeah. Well, Although, bit... to be fair, I don't really get that rumor only because when the book initially came out, the rumor was that she was fully involved. Like, she really was like, yeah, put this in, put this in, put this in, put this in. And now it's like, oh, she's regretting. Yeah, it's PR control. It's a lot of, um, at the moment, trying to separate Meghan away from Prince Harry publicly and professionally. Wow. And yeah, I was hearing rumors that they're possibly separating or getting a divorce. Do you believe any of that? Not yet. I'm actually releasing a video later on today. Um, so do stay tuned for it. Not Ooh. yet. Yeah, not yet. It's it's funny you, you bring that up because I literally like recorded a video on this like over an hour ago. And so the gist of it is this, and I'll sh I show the receipts in the video. I do believe they will split up. I do believe they will get divorced. It's only a matter of time, just not yet. Megan still needs Hazza. 
She still needs her. She, mm. Sorry, she still needs him. Reason being is because she's only famous and earning money because of who she married and who she's born in. Take as of a way, she goes into obscurity. No one cares. And, and quickly, too, because she wasn't, she was. A briefcase girl on on Deal or No Deal or what was was that the name? Of yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is she gonna go back to that? No, she's very bougie now. Yeah, this and and oh yeah, the Deal or No Deal thing. Funny you bring that up because when she did her now cancelled dumped archetypes episodes last year, or oh. the ones that she did do anyway. She turned around and she said that, you know, deal or no deal basically treated her like a bimbo, that, you know, they didn't oh. use her for a brain and her intellect, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I'm sorry, lass, yeah. but you don't need to be a freaking Einstein to look pretty, stand there, and open up a freaking briefcase. Like, I wish these celebrities, it's all, it's a, you hear the same story over and over again. I wish I could hear one celebrity woman be like yes i got this job because i was pretty it was all i could get at the time it was a foot in the door it was a stepping stone of course i got it because i was good looking what did i expect i was brand new you have to prove yourself over the years like yes you get in because you're good looking but then hopefully you do more okay and <laughs> to pretend that that is not part of how so many women get their start in showbiz or in acting it's is paying your dues right yes it's that would be like for me to deny, oh, yeah, I never did any open mics. I just, you know, I just woke up one day and had 100,000 Twitter followers. Not like this has not been a freaking 13-year uh, journey or whatever. People are, are ridiculous. Then they go, oh, I want to be respected for my brain. It's like, okay, Megan. Rumors. Okay, this is Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Sources deny rumors of trouble in paradise. Rumors are swirling that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's marriage is on the rocks. Radar Online reported Tuesday that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are taking time apart to heal and rebuild their bond. They're trying to figure out what hit them. Harry doesn't fit in Meghan's tacky Tinseltown world, a source told the outlet, adding that he's hope hoping to, quote, find himself. However, an insider close to the couple who wed in May of 2018, assures page six that any speculation of a breakup is false. It's not true. It's literally made up. Like, why would she ever break up with him? Uh, she's not going to do any better. Not yet. She will, in my opinion. Um, if uh, One book that I recommend everyone to read is by Tom Bower. He is a, a biographer, does his homework. He, did, he released a book, I think it was last year now, called Revenge. And... He looks into Megsy's past and there seems to be, allegedly, this kind of pattern where she meets someone who's higher up the ladder, okay, has more clout than her, uses them, and then as soon as she's got more clout than them, Oof. discards them, done, dusted, used them, on to next. Um, I did a video a few weeks back about one such person called Millie McIntosh. Uh, as soon as she met Prince Harry, that was it. She was done. Wow. He was out. Yeah. And so I think the same, allegedly, uh, is going to happen with Prince Harry. That once she is higher than him, once she has more money than him in her own right, more clout, more fame, more influence, whatever you want to call it, right? That's when she's going to press that button and be like, right, divorce time. But not yet because she needs him. It's so what sad for the kids, though. Like, I mean, this does seem like typical Hollywood behavior, but the fact that there are like two little kids involved, it's it's sad, but it's nothing new. Uh, so I wonder. Let's take bets. Let's see. I'd say they're gonna get they're gonna break up. Maybe twenty twenty five. Is that fair guess? Yeah. I I would even say depending on how quick her agency can get her. Um, individual deals in her own right maybe back in a 2024 wow as we previously reported, get deals that is <laughs> harry harry is planning to return to africa solo for a new netflix documentary uh raider online source says the renegade loyal 38 feels most like himself while on the continent which he considers his second home a source added that the sussexes who moved to montecito california in march 2020 
After stepping back as senior members of the royal family are under tremendous financial pressure to fund their lavish California lifestyle, which includes their $14 million mansion and huge security costs, that stress, coupled with their emotional issues, has likely made their life a living hell. Taking time apart on different continents will hopefully help them find whatever they need to move on. Meanwhile, an anonymous tipster told Du, du Moi that the pair had sold their mansion in Montecito and Harry was living in another place. Why don't they just downgrade? Get Get an apartment. Get a small house. I don't know. There's only four of them. They don't need all that. Uh, the self-proclaimed curators of pop culture behind the celeb gossip site responded, not sure if the house was sold, but heard a couple weeks ago he was trying to stay someplace else. Hmm. Oh, God. Yeah, I heard the Spotify was such a huge failure that she barely did any of her own podcast episodes that she would uh, yeah. like pre-record questions and somebody else on her staff would actually interview whoever the episode was with. And the only ones that she went in for were like the A-list, A-list ones. Ugh. Yeah. Th th this is the kind of woman we're dealing with here. Oh, yeah. Make no mistake about it. At all. Cloud chaser. Last exactly. month. Period. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and the thing is, she isn't She isn't done yet. Um, she doesn't. When, when you look at what her net worth was before me in Hazard. And has his net worth before me in Megse. I mean, he dwarfs her. For her to press that button on the divorce, she needs to be higher than him. Yeah. Before she does it. In her mind, in my opinion, yeah. Wow. So it was a $20 million deal, uh, their yeah. archetypes podcast. Uh Oh my god, it's not gonna have it's not gonna have a second season. I always laugh when I see that podcasts have seasons. It's like uh <laughs> it's not a show. I mean, it's not like a TV show. At the time, I think that the whole idea of a season of a podcast is to justify when these celebrity types like stop doing it or become uninterested. Uh, then they make it the, the idea of a season makes a, a pause seem like more deliberate. At the time, insiders told us that the couple had struggled to come up with any great ideas. <laughs> it's just they don't have any ideas and they're not doing their own interviews. Harry was oh, this, to, this 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 was an idea though from Hazza. This is ridiculous. Harry was reported to have pitched interviews with Trump, Zuckerberg, Putin, Pope Francis, a lineup that allegedly puzzled executives. <laughs> Like, what do you have to talk about with these guys? In fact, sports podcaster Bill Simmons, one of Spotify's most senior execs, called the prince and the former actress effing grifters <laughs> in the wake of their can canceled contract. Woo. Yep. Wow. That's bold oh, and yeah. hilarious. The embarrassing ordeal capped a disastrous run of bad PR for the duo, which included their widely mocked claim to have been victims of paparazzi-fueled high-speed car chase. Uh, the Prince controversial, of course, the Spare book and the Twosomes polarizing Harry and Maggie Do Meghan documentary. The hits keep coming for the Sussexes. Meanwhile, royal expert Daniela, isn't that, wouldn't that be a great job to have? I'm a royal expert. <laughs> Daniela Elser claimed that Marco, 41, who shares four-year-old son Archie and two-year-old Lilibet with Harry, is looking to establish her own brand. This is exactly what you're saying. Establish her own brand and make millions, meaning that for the first time, they are truly on divergent professional paths. She's like, I want Mark to not words. need you. They've not split up yet. She she needs him still. Damn. Homegirl should just start her own YouTube channel <laughs> and just learn learn the hard way like we did. Uh, this is funny, too. Harry and Meghan were asked to fly on yeah. US Air Force One with Biden after Queen's funeral, but were denied. And Jill didn't invite. Invictus Games to avoid upsetting uh, oh she didn't attend the Invictus Games to avoid upsetting the Royals so are the Sussexes attempts to become political players in America faltering dun 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 but okay, this so is the thing right it's this speaks to the um, kind of sense of entitlement that she and Prince Harry has now for Prince Harry it's understandable to a certain point because he was brought up with that sense of entitlement because of his station in life being a prince right and now son of the King of England so I, I kind of see that but with Megze oh yeah they wanted to ride back to the U.S. on Air Force One after the Queen's funeral, but the request was denied by the White House in case it caused a commotion. Months earlier, first, it's it's so funny for them. It's like, oh, yeah, can you give me a ride? <laughs> but it's on yeah. Air Force One where it's like us. It's like, can we share an Uber? 
<laughs> well, I, I, I was kind of thinking the other way, like Megzi and Hazza, like calling up president and be like, can you Uber us back to America in Air Force One? Like, Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But how That's they it. even have the audacity to even think of asking yes. this. So again, that sense of entitlement that these two have and they wonder why, you know, people don't like them. Yeah. Uh, months earlier, First Lady Jill Biden uh, was also invited to attend Harry's Invictus Games, but the idea was killed amid concerns that the royal family may have been offended by her presence there. Both the failed initiatives are understood. I mean, like, neither the Bidens <laughs> nor Harry and Meghan are in great standing with anybody, I think. Both the failed initiatives are understood to have been part of a campaign by the Sus Sussexes to gain political influence in the U.S., as they settled into life in California, Megan publicly advocated for the paid family leave to lawmakers on Capitol Hill and worked behind the scenes to connect with the Bidens. Oh, God. Yeah, she's such a little worm. She just wants to get her little meat hooks in everywhere. Let's see. Yeah, they just never look. They never look happy. I think they would have been better just to stay with the royal family. Uh, I think they oh, would yeah. have had the most influence there. Yeah. Oh, this is the thing, right? Even in that scenario and they still left, like, they squandered a big, awesome opportunity that they had, which was, you know, to be popular by using their platform for good, right, for actual charity, to, you know, help people do the route that essentially Princess Diana took when right. she divorced the then Prince Charles, right? Yeah, she did the whole, like, you know, charities for AIDS and then went to Africa uh, and, you know, um, put up a lot of awareness about the landmine problem that was still going on at the time. Like, she was well-beloved, partly in due because of her charity work, even after the royal family. If Megzi and Hazard chose that route and did that and still right. then earned a little bit on the side because, you know, they need to pay for security in the house and all that, I think we'd be looking at a totally different story here. But yeah. they had to play the victim and they had to demonise the royal family and the British public. The one thing that I think they failed to understand is this is an institution that's been going on for like uh, about a thousand years. <laughs> you really think that you're going to try and take down, you're, you're going to take down an institution that's lasted over a thousand years by playing the Wet card, right? And what? obviously, Megan. It, it's the whole reason why. Okay, oh, we can get popular from from a total outsider's perspective. It's like, okay, Megan is the reason that they think they can get popular and blow up and become huge celebrities in America. But we go like the typical American looks at them and go, "Wow, you were dealt a pretty good hand," and you just basically said, "Like, fuck you." We're, yeah, you know, we're unappreciative. So it's like. Why would we care about anything you have to say if you you had this great life? Uh, you don't have to worry about like working yourself to death. You're, you're not stuck on a 40 hour a week dead end job. It's like you can do whatever you want. Your whole life is going to be paid for. Uh, and you're uh -uh. just going to be like, no, fuck you guys. Like not everyone has the perfect family. Like, of course, they there's problems there, but. Americans are not going to accept you because you already you're already coming off looking extremely entitled and arrogant and disrespectful. So this is the thing, right? When you're in the royal family, it's work. I don't know, make no mistake about it. It is work. So you've got to do the appearances. You've got to do the charity work. There's a lot involved. Um, because the royal family is partially funded by the British taxpayer. Right. And so they have to give back um, in, in, in certain ways. And I think what happened is Megzi thought that she knew it all. She thought she knew what she was getting herself in for, thinking, you know, I'm from Hollywood, this, that, and the other. Well, Hollywood, this, that, and the other. Uh -huh. um, I'll be able to handle the royal family, blah, blah, blah. And then when she got into the royal family thinking that it was going to be a walk in the park, and that she'd be waited on hand and foot. Right. It was a case of, oh, no, that's not the reality. No, girl, you have to work for this privileged life. She didn't yeah, like it's basically it. like you're signing up to work for a corporation, and that is the royal family. You have to, everywhere you go, you're representing them. You're not just going to be, uh, 
waited on hand and foot. Yeah. Um, and she saw the reality of it, didn't like it, in my opinion. And that's when the shiz started to hit the fan. This is exactly what you're talking about. In the lead up to the memorial service, uh, Harry and Meghan were disinvited from a pre-funeral reception at Buckingham Palace where King Charles and Queen Camilla welcomed foreign royals and world leaders, in- including uh, the Bidens. The palace described the reception as for working members of the royal family. Harry and Meghan said to have been left baffled by that decision. Like, are they really so surprised? <sighs> Yeah, the the royal family is going to let those two on the balcony after all the mud that they've slung at them. Yeah, you're welcome. Open arms. Come on the balcony. Share the limelight. Don't think so. If they did that, there'd be an absolute uproar for British public. That's for sure. Because the polls at the time that were being held, the the overwhelming majority was do not let them on that balcony. Do not yeah. let them have any kind of center stage whatsoever. We don't want them. They're um, less popular than Prince Andrew, and that's saying something. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah that that like, really no is joke. saying a lot. Well, he's kept a, a, a extremely low profile. Like, he's he's pretty much disappeared from the from the public eye. Uh, the U.S. government pays for all official trips, like the Bidens travel to London, but Harry and Meghan are not American officials. Uh, Biden pays for his children and grandchildren to ride the plane. The Democratic Party pays for any travel. Yeah, so they that would have been a bad look to have Harry yeah. and Meghan on Air Force One. Oh, my God. She's like, Jill's like, look, I have enough to do making sure, you know, wiping the oatmeal off Joe's lips. OK, I can't be having extra drama. Wow, they've made multiple attempts to for the Sussexes to join forces with the Bidens. So slimy. They have like nothing of value. They they would have been best served just staying with the royal family, doing as the best they can within that within that frame, within those uh, I don't know. They're just it's just not gonna get any better. It's a bad look. No. And what's and what's gonna happen is when they do get divorced, uh Prince Harry is gonna come back to the UK. He's gonna come back to the royal family, but the royal family can never hundred percent trust him ever again. He mm-hmm. has disclosed m- private conversations, private scenarios, just in his book alone with Spare, right? So they're going to treat him then like Prince Andrew. Put him in mm-hmm. corner. He exists, but we're sweeping him under carpet. He exists, but he's not heard. That kind of thing. Wow. That's it, how we'll deal with him. It's so funny how honest this guy, this Spotify guy is about Harry and Meghan. Like he, yeah. he called them effing grifters. And then I have to, I have to get drunk one night and tell the story of the Zoom I had with Harry to try to help him with the podcast idea. It's one of my best stories. <laughs> Fuck them, the grifters. Harry and Meghan, meanwhile, they're they're blaming their situation on bad luck, world events, and unfortunate timing, including, of course, COVID and the death of the Queen. <laughs> the word is that they think they've been really unlucky, but it's believed the Sussexes saw the Bidens as an ally in their attempt to establish their brand post Megxit. The thing is, though, I, again, I did a video on that as well, where they were blaming COVID, the Queen, and all this lot, and and, and even uh, Prince Philip. And I'm like, well, hang on a minute. When it comes to COVID, you cashed in mm-hmm. by doing the Vax concert and raising all that money for extra vaxes to improve your standing, to improve their image, their PR look, right? When it comes to Queen Elizabeth, they went to the Diamond Jubilee last year. They were sent a stage. They were there for limelight. They were there. And then with Prince Philip, at the time that he went into hospital, um which was the year of the Oprah interview, it was around about the time that they did that Oprah interview that it was filmed. And once he was released from hospital, there was an article that said that allegedly Meghan wasn't going to postpone the Oprah interview, that it was going to go ahead as planned because it had nothing to do with Prince Philip whatsoever. So the blaming now allegedly Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth and COVID for all their issues um and their career fails but at the time they were using them to try and get a career and be successful this that and the other 
Yeah. So like, I don't blame everything but themselves. Yeah. Ultimately. It's fun. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. It's a fun dumpster fire. Uh, Xander Z, Steph, what do you think of Jodie Whittaker? Yorkshire? Is it Yorkshire or Yorkshire? I can't. Remember. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. You get it right. Yeah. Yorkshire. Uh, Jodie Whittaker. Meh. I'm not. I'm not a big Doctor Who fan. I'm really, really not a big Doctor Who fan at all. I don't really think I've even actually watched a full episode. I know. Shocker, <laughs> right? I'm English and I haven't watched a full episode of Doctor Who. Um, but eh, I have no opinion of her. Okay. She looks pretty. I only watched Doctor Who because the next boyfriend was really into it. And I was like, I guess this is kind of a goofy show, but sure. Like, I wouldn't watch it on my own. Uh, Deranged Lunatic. Chrissy, Steph would be a great guest on Simpcast. Yes, you would. Yes, Steph, any Sunday uh, that you're free, I would love to get you on Simpcast. It's just basically this, but there's like six to nine of us and uh, we're drunk and we're talking about <laughs> pop culture, some politics, an occasional animal video. It's a good time. Let me know when you want me on, fair play. Ooh. Although I can't drink alcohol, but I'm crazy enough without that anyway, so okay. we're fine. <laughs> Is it like you used to drink and then something happened or you just never been a big fan? Uh, used to drink. Not a lot because I either had university, school the next day or a job. Um, but no, developed pancreatitis. Not oh. alcohol caused, but my doctors have said I can't drink alcohol ever again. So Okay. You're not missing anything. I was throwing up the other day and I was like, I'm too old for this. Like, was it really worth it, Chrissy? Were the $20 super chats really worth the full shots of vodka? <laughs> I miss. No, I do miss it. I don't miss the social aspect of it anymore. I used to think I was like missing out, but not anymore. Uh, but I miss uh, Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. Shots. Oh, yeah. Jaeger bombs. Loved Jaeger bombs. I remember Jaeger bombs. Yeah. My God. That was like, that was like a popular drink in college. Oh, so awesome. Right. Apple sour shots, uh, mm -hmm. Malibu um, and lemonade or Malibu and Coke, whichever, vodka and Coke, and this is going to be really bougie now, Dom Perignon. <gasps> Fancy. I know. A little bit bougie, <laughs> but I miss that. Yeah. What did you study in school? Like, what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up, like when you were, oh, when you were younger? So at university, um, huh, my degree, a bit of a mouthful, is International Relations and Security Studies. My dissertation and my major was the Ethics and Philosophy of International Terrorism Ooh. with three years of conflict resolution. All of that basically means that I wanted to get into the police force, transfer and get fast-tracked into the counterterrorism unit and analyse intelligence coming through. Cool. You could be like a Bond girl. <laughs> ish yeah just you know without mm, the bond girl craziness mm -hmm. but um that didn't happen in the end quite simply put because of my pancreas my pancreas hit me at that point and it got it's got to the point where uh, to get into police force you have to pass a medical and i wouldn't be able to pass it Aww. and to get into counterterrorism unit you have to be part of the police force because they only recruit from within never from the outside Oh, that's annoying. Well, you could still get like a hot cop outfit and maybe wear it for wear it around the house. <laughs> oh, that's being done. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's being done. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me the about first select audience. <laughs> tell me about Upview uh, dot AI. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so this is a little bit of a side thing that I've got going on. It's a company that I'm part of, where we are developing an app to help youtube content creators grow and to change you know viewers into youtube content creators because a lot of people out there do want to be on youtube but they're put off because it can be difficult to be successful on youtube it's difficult to understand the algorithm to understand from what we were talking about earlier on what seos are about effective tags effective titles descriptions thumbnails and what we're doing is we're trying to be the answer to all of that and be like look do you know what we're going to make youtube easy for 
everyone uh, and through the power of AI will give you the best titles, descriptions, tags, thumbnails. Uh, we'll let you know what your competitors are doing so that you can take on board their tactics and learn from them. Let you know what your audience is talking about. Let you know the best content ideas that's particular for your channel and your niche. Again, all through the power of AI, uh, which is not what anyone else is doing at the moment. Uh, so we are in the midst of developing that. We are very close, actually, uh, to getting it released. Really, really excited for you all to get your hands on it. Uh, just to be, you know, completely 100. I'm the Director of Partnerships and Growth over on UpView AI, just to be completely transparent. And one thing that we're asking everyone to do is, if you have a YouTube channel, please go on to upview.ai and join our wait list. Two reasons for that. First one is once it's released, you're going to have your first mitts on it. Uh, you're going to have first look at it, first trial of it. You can, you know, take advantage of all the AI goodies that we're going to jam pack into this uh, to make you and your channel successful. Second reason why I'm asking everyone with a YouTube channel to join our wait list is quite put the more people that's on the wait list, the more easier it is for us to attract investors. Uh, to invest into the company so we can develop the app even further because we've got more ideas that we want into this app. But of course, it takes funding, it takes money. So the more people that's on the wait list, the more future the investors are like, there's a demand for it. And so it's more easy for them to part their money with us. Let's put it that way. Well, this is exciting because usually when you hear about uh, something involving AI, it's for something scary or it's going to take over your job or kill you in your sleep so <laughs> it's nice to hear like something positive uh regarding ai so oh I'm yeah gonna, i'm gonna so, for, for show you know for, for for those people that are you know considering you know setting up a youtube channel but are thinking they're put off because it's too hard to understand or get your head around and things like that well this is the answer to it upview ai is your answer uh to making it easy and we will hold your hand every step of the way through the app to monetize your channel again through the power of AI. Oh, okay, cool. That sounds awesome. Um, I want to get the sense of, because we were talking about before we went live, the, the whole like bonus hole phenomena thing. And oh, it is, yeah. it's very funny, but then you're like, oh my God, people are actually taking this seriously. And it, it makes me... When I really think about it, I'm like, why, why do normal people, why do the majority have to reorient their language, their culture, their behaviors around a mentally ill minority, small group of people? And I mean, the answer is ultimately probably just money <laughs> and uh, corporate interest, special interest, ultimately all, you know, or maybe to just make us nuts. But is what's the sense over over by you is do folks have a sense of humor about it or is there a genuine anger towards the bonus hole <laughs> bonus hole terminology and other <laughs> woke phrases so the only reason why i know about this woke phrase of bonus hole and people who menstruate that's another bugbear of mine is because <clears throat> um I i'm in this youtube space I have American friends, uh, and so I'm much more aware of the culture and what's going on over there at the moment. If not, wouldn't have known about bonus hole. Wouldn't have known about people who menstruate. Over here in the UK, it's not. It's no. It's a vagina. It's women who have periods, and that's it. I think it is trying to slowly creep into British culture, um, but it's not it's not noticeable at this point uh, it will do and then we're going to have the same problem but let me lay it all on the line be whoever you want to be okay identify whoever you want to identify as i ain't going to take that freedom away from you i respect it whatever love is love identity is identity go for it all right let's take the kids out of the equation because that's a different conversation right but adults be whoever you want to be, right? Brilliant. But don't then try and erase my femininity by then renaming core things that make me a female biologically. 
because facts are facts at the end of the day. I'm a born biological female, I have a vagina, and I have periods. I am not someone who has a freaking bonus hole, and I'm not someone who is a person who menstruates. Get bent. <laughs> Get bent. Now, for those that transition to be women, yes, I will recognize you as a woman. I will recognize you as female. I have no problem with that. Brilliant. Be happy. Wonderful. But biologically, there are just some things that you're just never, ever going to have that females have. It, that's just fact. But then that doesn't make you any less of a female when it comes to your identity. It's just a, a physiological kind of stuff. Yeah. and Do you know what I mean? The reason for this is, oh, well... You know, we exist. It, it, it's their their words don't match up with the behaviors and the things that they're trying to put forth in society. Oh, well, we li we're just trying to exist. It's like, OK, you can you can exist without creating new words and phrases and bothering <laughs> other people that are just trying to exist and telling them they have to change what they're doing. It's like, you know, non-binary, they want to change the language so that the um, uh, identifier markers includes they and them. Fine. Fine. Not a problem. But don't try, and as far as I'm concerned, erase my femininity by trying to rename core things that make me female. Again, you can get bent. I'm not having that. And this whole bonus hole thing, someone that says bonus hole, I'm thinking the back end anyway. <laughs> Anyone, right, who does me anally, now that's a bonus. And it's a bonus right. they will never, ever, ever experience because technically I've done it like three or four times, one with my ex, and I, and that was like first and last time because I was like, it really feels like you proper one to like shiz it out all the time right, right? and it's then the other fun. times technically a colonoscopy which is basically doctors giving you anal but in a medical kind it's, of yeah, medical sense medical. right i think it's like i think the butthole should be called the bonus hole because yeah that's it's not guaranteed that you're gonna have any action back there it's just a bonus. right <laughs> right and and to be fair it's a definite no-no for me that is an Same. exit hole only. Same. Like, I've learned that the, technically, really the hard way. <laughs> it's really, like all women, yes, we have to learn the hard way. It seems like fun. You're like, oh, I want to be, I want to be cool. I want to get, be down with whatever. Sure, I'm, I'm just going to be easy. And then you're like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, this is not fun. <laughs> At the absolute best case scenario, it's t tolerable. Uh, I've never had an, a, an instance where it was fun, enjoyable. Like I'd prefer that over something else. It's like, nah, not even tolerable. It's not good. It's not, not good. enough KY jelly would ever persuade <laughs> me to ever let a man go near my bonus hole. <laughs> ever like no, it's just not happening. Okay. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Like I um. Uh, like Samantha says in Sex and the Sea, I'm a trisexual, I'll try anything once. Right. You never know, right, if you're going to like it or not. Simple yeah. as. I tried it, didn't like it. We're well, done. Probably, yeah, you're probably not going to like it, but go ahead. <laughs> you never know, right? Oh, my gosh. What, of any of your videos, what has, which video has gotten the most blowback or you've gotten the most hate from? Oh. If I ever call Princess Catherine Princess Kate. Really? Oh, yeah. People are proper precious about that. This is Kate Middleton or a different yeah, one? Yeah, Kate Middleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't call her Princess Kate? No. People go nuts over that. And the thing that wow. they don't understand is, so... um the royal family prior to Princess Kate or Princess Catherine um, to marry into the royal family, you really had to be a uh, blue blood or you had to be in those kind of circles where you were a lady, lord, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> Very ooh -la, la part of the gentry. Kate Middleton was the first commoner 
to marry into the royal family, but to marry into the royal family to an heir to the throne. That wow. was massive. That was a huge massive. deal because everyone was like, I mean, before Meghan Markle came along, they were like, oh my God, she's in a, a tube top. What is what is everyone going to think? Right. Modeling yeah. show. And looking back, it was like pretty tame. It's just very a couple tame. pictures of her in like a crop top. Yeah, very tame. Uh, but the reason why a lot of us refer to her as Princess Kate, it isn't out of disrespect. It's actually out of love because she was known as Kate Middleton when she was a commoner. She's from us. She's from our team. We're all commoners, right? So we call her Princess Kate because she's one of us. She's Kate, right? Yeah, she never went by Catherine. No, no, not really. Uh, it was it was Kate, Kate Middleton. And so, yeah, when we call her Princess Kate, it's not out of disrespect. It's actually out of love because she came from our team. She was a commoner like us. It reminds us that she came from us and we're proud of that. Right. And you came to know her as Kate. So they're just trying to make her sound bougie by adding oh, the yeah, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I use it interchangeable at this point. Princess Catherine, Princess Kate. Because word is that she prefers Princess Catherine, which makes sense. But How did they meet? In college? Yes. A university, um, which technically I think is your college. But yeah, St. Andrews University, they met. Um, she was studying, I think, art. And he was studying geography or something along those lines. But yeah, the rumor tough. is that she went to St. Andrews because she knew Prince uh, um, William was going to be there. And <gasps> really? Like, yeah. And that she had like a poster of Prince William up in a dorm room at one point. Rumor. Oh my gosh. Rumor. It must yeah. be so tricky if you're Prince William and you're like, oh, it's got to be so much pressure because, and I'm sure they give him a lot of talks to the effect of like you're gonna have hundreds of girls at your dick all trying to marry you because they want to be I don't know, a princess or queen eventually or whatever. Mm. But it's got to be tough. Yeah, but she played it right. She played it really right. Um, she wasn't clingy. She wasn't needy or anything like that. She was the whole take it or leave it kind of situation. When they split up temporarily, um, she went out and she lived her best life. She really? She did it right. When did they break up? Hmm? When did they break up? Oh, my goodness. I want to say 2004, 2005, maybe. Okay. Kind of around that period. Um, don't quote me on that. But, yeah, they broke up temporarily. And Prince William actually commented on this year's letter saying that it was his way of trying to give Kate Middleton an out. Really? Yeah. Because he knew that if she did carry on with him and they got married, he knew the life that she would have to lead at that point and what she would have to do. And so it was his way of trying to give her an out. But she came back and so... And oh. It's true now, no. It's like uh, with, the, uh, <laughs> with the Amish, when you have Rumspriga, it's like, you know, you can go, be free, and then if you really want to be Amish, then you come back. <laughs> It's like when they turn really, I didn't know that 18 or something, they can go have a normal life, and then if they really want to continue being Amish, they can come back. What's the percentage of them actually continuing the free life? Gosh, to those I don't know. Are... That's a really good question. It's like, do you want alcohol or do you want to build barns with your bare hands? What it's up to you, right? Do you guys talk much about uh, someone in the chat was like, Have you guys discussed Harry's dad not being Charles? Is that do people care? I mean, he really doesn't look like print like uh like William. So this is going back to um James Hewitt. So for those that don't know, Google James Hewitt, look at his picture from back in the day of Prince Harry. There is a little bit of a resemblance. Um, we also know that Princess Diana did have an affair with James Hewitt back in the day. And so there's always been this rumour that Prince Harry is not the son of King Charles, but actually the son of James Hewitt. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right. What? It's scary, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Now, the Prince Harry has since actually discussed this. Actually, I want to say recently. Um, and he turned around and he was like, "All these rumors about, you know, King Charles not being my dad, this, that, and the other." He felt like it was a signed a, a kind of Machiavellian plan to oust him from the royal family. Oh. Now he already did that himself really by quitting <laughs> when he when he met Megzi and all that lot. But yeah, he got it into his head with his paranoia that it was some kind of media plan to get rid of him from the royal family. I don't know, maybe there, because his eyes are pretty close together and so are Harry's. The the official kind of line from Buckingham Palace is the uh, Prince Harry is the son of King Charles, that this rumour is absolutely BS, and that when... Um, now, this is rumour, this bit. When Prince Harry was born, he was born instantly with a head of hair, as some babies do, and he had... It was red, it was ginger. And apparently, if I remember rightly, King Charles, the rumour goes, turns around and says, bloody hell, he definitely has the Spencer gene. Because Diana's side of the family, the Spencer family, there are a lot of redheads there as well. Okay. And so, yeah, it's just plausible that, you know, with the, the redhead, the gingerness with Prince Harry, he took it from the Spencer side of family. Uh, and I mean, to be fair, Princess Diana and King Charles, I mean, the both of them had multiple affairs anyway. Wow. That's scandalous. So, I, guess it's just, yeah. I guess it's super common. Yeah. Wow, wow. But personally, I believe that he is the son of King Charles. Um, because there's no real evidence to suggest that he's not. I mean, what, could he take a test, like a DNA test? Yeah. Chances are they have done. Right. What the answer is, who knows? Right. If he is it the was... son, absolutely fine. If not, then it's a monarchy constitutional crisis uh, upon which we haven't seen in modern times. But will they ever admit that? Hell no. I imagine, like, just make sure the firstborn is theirs. And if you want to fuck around for the next second, third, fourth kid, go for it. But make sure that first mm -hmm. one, that heir, is definitely his. <laughs> the first and second. <coughs> right, right. Because if anything happens to it first, you need your backup. Yeah. Which is Prince Harry, i.e. spare from his uh, spare. book. Yeah. But isn't he like 145th in line to the throne or something? Like there's so many other people that would go before him. Um, No. So he is around about, you've got, hmm. I think he's about fifth. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. He's fifth in line to the throne somewhere, uh, somewhere there, because you've got uh, Prince William, then you've got the three Cambridge children, and then you've got Prince Harry, then you've got Prince Archie, then you've got Princess Lilibet behind. Oh, so wait, what about um, Kate and William's kids? They're Kate. in front. They're, oh, sorry, they're the Cambridge children. So you've got Prince William. Uh, then you've got the three children of Prince William and Princess Catherine. So William's kid, like George, is before Prince Harry, basically? Yeah, he's above Prince Harry, as is Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. They're all above Prince uh, Harry when it comes to the order of succession. Wow, that's so interesting. Then you've got Prince Harry. Then you've got um, his two children. So Prince Archie and then Princess Lilibet. Is he still in line for the throne if he's if he's left the family though? Yes. Wow. What? So he could just be like living in LA doing TikToks, a part of the royal just not about it at all. He's completely left. It's God forbid something happens to that whole family, then they then they have to call him out, like call yeah. him off the bench. Yeah. He is then our king. And Megzi then turns into our queen. Oh, God. 
Chappelle will officially have frozen over at that point, mind you. But yeah. Wow. Yeah, maybe they just Kate and William have to keep pumping out kids, <laughs> keep pumping out kids, so he won't have a chance. That's fine. yeah. Basically, yeah. That that is their official function now. <laughs> <laughs> keep 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 making the machi- the babies. Keep yeah. making the babies. <laughs> uh, everyone, just send Kate Middleton lingerie for the good of the country. Thank yes, you. yes. For, the, <laughs> for, for 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 God, King and country. There you go. <laughs> Keep 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 spouting those babies. Do it. Oh my God, my my friends at my bachelorette party. Uh, it was in June because I got married last month, and they they all gave me. And I don't know this was a thing. They all gave me some kind of lingerie. They're like, oh, take this on your honeymoon. And like some of them were so funny. Like I put them on, and like uh, Frank would just be like, "What?" <laughs> He's like, "I can tell who this is from. It's like a leopard, and it's like all strings. Like it's funny." And then I. I, w- I had something that was like dark green and I, I kind of, <laughs> as we were drunk, I put each of the things on, like while I was still at my bachelorette party, like in the hotel room. And I, I'm very good at making things not sexy. So I had this like green lingerie on and I said, I'll get me gold. And I was like running around the room <laughs> like, trying to attack my friends. Like, and then I, I put some, like a different thing on and like have a different character. And, and then I was telling like, my husband Frank about this. He's like, okay, well now you've just ruined those for me because if I see you in the green outfit, I'm going to think leprechaun. So I shouldn't have done that. It's been a while since I've worn any sexy, sexy lingerie. It's I know. Been a while. I I stopped too because I'm like, it's not comfortable. What's the point? It doesn't even work. But it it is worth it. Every once in a while, gets up get something crazy and just you know wear it under your sweatpants and bend over that's my advice <laughs> I'm well, a, I I'm a no, I thought it was comfortable and I enjoyed wearing it you know like the sexy lingerie uh but it's just been a long time because I'm single so really your your dms aren't flooded with offers and dick pics I'm shocked <laughs> yeah let's not encourage that uh the okay. dick pic part uh not the dick yeah pic. Uh, it's, face uh, it's been over a year now uh and so yeah and i i used to love like wearing like the lingerie and buying it and choosing it and like planning it out and everything and i really really liked that now whoever i meet next i've not done it for so long i kind of i mean i will do it again but i kind of feel a little bit like trepidation doing it like for the first time for someone new it's like it is what definitely gets you in the mood is like going to the store and like trying a bunch on like going to like even if you can like go to like a slightly a specialty store, or, like have a woman, like somebody there who's going to help you pick stuff out. Like then you do get excited. <gasps> You're like, oh, okay. Oh. These look good. Oh, this crazy story. So um, split up with my ex for 15 years back in May last year. Oh. And so, oh no, it's a good thing. Then um, finding a new home to buy, right? I'd found a home, but it, there was a lot of issues with it, let's say. But, there was a new home close by, let's say, that was going on the market that I caught wind of. And so I'm literally in the middle of Ann Summers, which is a British lingerie store. Uh, I'm in the changing rooms. I'm speaking to the estate agents, completely naked, (laughs) trying on lingerie, but I'm naked at this point, buying my new house. Wow. I bought my new house naked in the middle of a lingerie store. And That's summers. exciting. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, it's gonna go for the asking price because all the other properties on that row has done, has haven't they? Let's keep it real. She was like, yeah, like, okay, asking price done. Wow, that was so how the conversation went. Whilst I was naked. So maybe you should go back to the lingerie store naked and then just start swiping through Tinder or whatever your apps. You know what I mean? Like it's it's bound to be lucky again for you. Oh no, apps I'm done with. <laughs> and there's a reason for this. Well, two. Um, the only date that I went on, I found out on that date that he was a vegan vegetarian. Oh no. When I have and he hates fish, he hates the smell of fish because it makes him sick. So I if uh. I, I saw this really, really nice like sushi bowl that I really wanted. But if I'm having to think about what I'm ordering because of the other person and then thinking about, well, hang on a minute, how am I going to take him to Whitley to meet my family? We all eat meat and fish. My auntie's going to turn around and say, what the hell am I going to feed you? Like, wow. that's just not going to fly, right? 
And then the second reason is, without going into too much detail, I am actually interested in someone. Like, I really, really like this person. <laughs> the only thing is, if I didn't know them and saw them on the app and saw all their information, I'd be like, no, I'm not interested. So the apps, I think, take out that really crucial, like, chemistry. Yes. That I think is important for when meeting someone or, like, looking at someone, kind of thinking, hmm, maybe. Someone look horrible on paper and you would click with them if you met in person or spoke. Exactly. Yeah. And then I figured that these apps, they're taking your money. The longer you're on the apps, yep. the more they make their money, right? So I just yes. think it's a big major con in the end. It definitely should not be the only thing that you do because you're going to get frustrated mm. for sure. Um, I know you have to go soon to another interview uh, from Borg Pork. Steph is single hookup with Captain Chokeout. Oh, he does not Are like we? me. <laughs> I think he's another YouTuber. Uh, um, okay. Would you ever date a fan? That's a good question. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. No. <laughs> Everybody follow Steph uh, on Twitter at Steph Alter Nerd. That's A L T E R Nerd. And check out Steph the Alter Nerd com and upview.ai. Sign up if you are a fellow YouTuber or you'd like to become a YouTuber um, to get to get help with your channel. Uh, anything else, Steph? Um, yeah. Subscribe to my channel uh, for your daily uh, royal news. And gossip served with a lot of sass and gobbiness. Uh, you liked what was coming out of my gob, you'll probably like my channel. And uh, Chrissy, thank you so much for inviting me on. Uh, absolute pleasure uh, to get to know you a little bit more on here. And uh, I will get thanks you... to everyone that's put up with me in the chat. Yes, I will get you on Simpcast ASAP. Um, we'll have to do this again sometime. Thank you to everybody in the chat. And we will see you next time. Bye.